Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and you're very welcome to my channel, So Me Sarah. On this channel we talk about cross stitch mostly, sometimes a little bit of life and other stitching as well. I'm very pleased if you are here for the first time. I hope you will enjoy your time here on the channel and maybe have a little look through some of my previous episodes. Just don't judge me if you go back and you see that a year ago I was still stitching some of the same things. <laughs> To those of you who are regular viewers who pop in and out when you can, I really appreciate the community that you help to create here on So Me Sarah. It is Sunday the 7th of May 2023 and it is the day after King Charles III's coronation. We had a lovely family day yesterday watching the coronation with the grandparents and we introduced Charlotte to uh, the cream tea. <laughs> so we had our scones with jam first and then cream <laughs> and she thought it was very nice and she said oh mummy it's all fancy. <laughs> so we had the special china out because if you can't bring out your special china on the coronation day when can you? <laughs> so <laughs> we had a lovely day. We had a cream tea in the morning while we watched the coronation and then we had our lunch together afterwards. So that was a nice family day. Charlotte also had some coronation fun at school. They had a little street party lunch. Her, her year groups got together and had a royal parade around school and they played some royal games. So I think that she's had quite a lot of royal fun <laughs> over the weekend. Tomorrow is officially an additional bank holiday for us here in the UK. Um, normally there are two bank holidays, on, one on the first Monday of May and one on the last Monday of May every year. One is a Labour Day bank holiday and the other is the late spring bank holiday. And um, this year we have this extra one for the King's coronation. Unfortunately I have to work but I'm hoping that I'll get that all done in the morning and then have a little bit of stitchy time in the afternoon because I am exhausted <laughs> and I would really like to sit on the sofa with my stitching for a bit. <laughs> anyway, that is our correlation updates. Um, I have also been away visiting uh, my friend Di. I was going to the lakes. Um, it is quite a long time since I was here uh, talking with you. Um, much longer than I had hoped, so I'm sorry that for the delay in returning, but it has been busy. Going away, getting ready to go away, dealing with coming back. <laughs> um, and, uh, and just, it's been a funny kind of, it's been a funny few weeks really, and there are more of them to come. There is no routine at school. I think we have a period of five weeks now where Charlotte is at school only four days a week for various reasons. There's bank holidays, there's teacher training, there's elections, there's a strike. Um, she's not at school during elections because they use her school as a polling station. So I think um, starting last week um, we have this run of five weeks where the routine is broken and she finds that very difficult because she knows in her head Saturday and Sunday are at home and she gets to do these certain things and Monday to Friday she has to go to school and all of a sudden when she gets up on Monday there's no school. <laughs> so it can be tough to, to have to um, help her understand the changes and it's also tough just trying to work around it and figure out childcare and <laughs> all of those inconveniences for us working parents. Anyway, enough of that, <laughs> enough of that grumbling. Um, so yes, I was away um, for the weekend. It was lovely. I was away visiting my friend Di, who lives in England in the Lake District. Now, when I was there, we had such a lovely time just chatting and catching up. But when I was there, we were able to put some artistic goodness and stitchy goodness into our days. And I thought I might share just a tiny bit of that with you um, here on some photographs, just for those of you who might like to see. As I talk, I'm going to insert some pictures for you to see, but on the Friday morning, we were able to visit Blackwell House. Now I have been to the lakes um, lots of years on holidays, but I've never managed to visit Blackwell House. So Di very kindly took me to see Blackwell. It is a house um, that is built in the style of the arts and crafts movement. 
the arts and crafts movement was started by William Morris and John Ruskin, really as an antidote to mass production of the Industrial Revolution and the fear that our crafts and true craftsmanship would be lost in, a, in an age of industrial industrial production, basically. So anyway, the house was built in 1900 and the architect, Bailey Scott, he was very much a proponent um, of the arts and crafts movement and he was engaged by the Holt family who were a family of brewers from Manchester. Um, he was engaged by them to, uh, to design and build and, um, their holiday home in the lakes. So he did that and he encouraged them to adopt some of these principles of, of um, Morris and Ruskin's arts and crafts movement. And the arts and crafts movement, um, I'm not going to explain it in full, but the arts and crafts movement had some principles like using local crafts people, local resources, local woods, local stone, um, designing with a local um, with a local feel to it. So this family, um, their name was Holt. They had German background. Holt means wood. He then encouraged them to adopt a family emblem, meaning from the tree and from a rowan tree. So you'll see in some of the pictures there's carving um, in wood of rowan trees and there's carvings on the ceilings of rowan berries, friezes of rowans. Um, and that was a, a motif that they carried throughout the house, really. Um, the uh, other ideas in the arts and crafts movement were about creating community spaces. So in this home, there's a great big central hall, basically a little bit like a medieval hall. And it was a multi-purpose, multi-function room. There was space for a billiards table. There were little nooks and crannies where you could sit and gather to have a conversation by the fire or to read your books by the fire. There was a music corner um, and there was just general space for relaxing. Up above there was a minstrels gallery to um, overlook and it was really built kind of um, almost with a, a treehouse feel to it um, I, and I suspect perhaps the children were allowed to go up there. <laughs> the house was incredible. It was really really stunning. I was so impressed by the carvings, the friezes. There's a peacock wallpaper that you'll see in the, um, like a frieze wallpaper up high that you'll see in the photographs that I have to share. The stained glass windows were spectacular. Um, even the window latches <clears throat> were beautiful. So they weren't just functional, they were beautiful too. I also saw a little bit of needlework, although there wasn't as much needlework in the house as I had thought there might be. Um, there were some of Morris's designs in curtain fabrics and, and that um, kind of thing. Uh, on one of the beds upstairs, there was a white work counterpane and it was absolutely gorgeous. And you know that I am looking forward to Jacob doing some white work tutorials in the future, Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery. So the um, white work counterpane gave me some kind of aspirations. <laughs> I think that would be <laughs> way, way ahead of me <laughs> in terms of in terms of my ability. But <laughs> but it you know it gave me something to aspire to. If you ever get a chance to call a Blackwell house, I would highly recommend it. I also highly recommend that you catch a tour while you're there. Um, mostly it's just a self guided tour of the house, walking tour of the house. It's not, it's not very big, it's not a huge stately home. It's a, it is a large, very large and comfortable um, family holiday um, residence. But um, it won't, doesn't necessarily take very long to visit. But they only have a tour twice a day. Um, perhaps in the summer season they might have a little bit more, but at this time of the year there is a tour at 11 in the morning and two in the afternoon. And we just happened to be there around about half past 10. So we were able to catch the 11 o'clock tour. And the lady just gave us um, a lovely tour and explanation of the downstairs of the house. Um, and everything is, is very well signed and explained 
in signage, but it was it's never the same as having someone who knows more of the background and who can breathe a bit of life into the story of the house. So that was really worth catching and that I re recommend that if you make a visit that you try to catch the tour. The other stitchy goodness that I have to share with you from my trip with Di is um, some embroidery. Now these are two embroideries that are hanging in Di's home and they are family heirloom pieces really. So these are two embroideries that were stitched by Di's great great grandmother. She suspects probably somewhere around the late, very late 1800s um, that they were stitched. They were painted silk pieces and then the, her grand, great great grandmother has embroidered over them and it's quite a significant amount of embroidery there are you know a, apart from the sky I would say it's pretty full coverage embroidery mostly a satin stitch um, and the use of just that sort of black and grey and cream kind of palette and they're stunning they really are stunning and I wish that I had history pieces like that in my family so I wanted to share the pictures with you, so hopefully you have seen those. Um, the one of the church is a picture of the local church that her grandmother knew and the church she was married in. And she set the time in her embroidery to the time that she was married according to the family history. <laughs> anyway, the family is retelling of that story. So that is some more stitchy goodness just to share with you share with you. If you are able to go back and have a look and zoom in on the pictures you'll be able to see some of the stitches a little bit better. It was hard to get photographs. Dye has them quite correctly <laughs> hanging where there isn't direct sunlight um, but there was still some reflection um, when I was trying to take some pictures. So anyway if you zoom in you might be able to catch a little bit more of the embroidery um, stitching itself. So there was quite a lot of chat there. I hope that you were able to bear with me. I just thought those were things that might interest the needle workers among us and hopefully most of us are needle workers who are here. Um, I know it's not cross stitch but um, still very interesting and um, of course the arts and crafts movement. I could see when the lady was talking about the principles of the arts and craft movement, I could see that in our craft today, how we like to reuse and recycle um, and respect the crafts, the craftsmanship that went before us. So I was thinking of those people who save the stitches and people who find stitching and embroideries in charity shops and bring them home and make use of them. Even if you're cutting them up and making project bags out of them, you're honouring and respecting and cherishing what has gone before. And we're trying to keep alive our craft and you know there was a, an acknowledgement in the arts and crafts movement also that craft good craftsmanship is expensive and we all know that <laughs> let's move on to some stitching and then i want to do a little stash spotlight on bees which i promised you and then i'll share some plans and then i will leave you in peace i haven't done as much stitching as i would have liked the last few weeks and i'm beginning to feel it <laughs> Um, I really need some good stitching therapy sessions <laughs> but it has been busy and out of routine and all of that so I just didn't get as much opportunity as I normally would. So there hasn't been huge amounts of progress but I have a few little bits and pieces to share with you. First of all I have a finish. Uh, I wouldn't, wasn't expecting a finish because I wasn't expecting to have a start of this nature. <laughs> But of course, with it being our um, coronation time and our coronation weekend, I decided about a week and a half ago that I wanted to have a small coronation stitch. So I had a good look, um, but I, well, I was kind of time bound, so I didn't get as good a look as I would have liked probably. Um, but anyway, I found a lovely pattern by Caterpillar Cross Stitch called Royal Coronation and I stitched it and I finished it. I finished it yesterday while I was watching the coronation, which I think is most fitting. So I'm gonna 
bring it in to show you close up. It is a lovely round little stitch. Um, I have stitched this on a 28 count Lugana in ice blue, it's spy guard. I stitched it in 28 count because I just wanted it to be very small and it's only three inches top to bottom. You can see my hand for comparison. So um, the original is stitched on 16 or 14 count, so it's about five or six inches um, or six, just slightly over six inches. I apologize, I keep rubbing my eye. I think I'm, I'm very tired and my eye is starting to bother me. <laughs> So sorry about that. Anyway, um, back to the stitching. This is, as I said, Royal Coronation. It is available on Caterpillar Cross Stitch as a kit or as a PDF pattern. So I just bought the PDF pattern because, you know, I just decided spontaneously <laughs> that I was going to stitch it and I didn't want to wait for a kit. Um, I just uh, chose colours that were close to their colours. They have a gold like a, a yellow gold I did substitute the DMC metallic for the crown instead of the yellow gold did not enjoy the DMC but I think it looks nice and <laughs> um, the, the metallic um, but I think it looks nice I uh, then chose a red and a white and a blue a purple now my purple is more purple than the caterpillar cross stitch was um, a lighter shade of purple it was more of a lavender color um, i just went a little bit darker with mine i made a small tweak to the pattern so here this is where the date is there is a folded um ribbon you know like a swag a ribbon swag that runs across the center and it just has the date on it but it has the folds of the ribbon swag and I decided, quite by accident really, <laughs> um, I stitched that part of the, of the ribbon first, just within those, you know, a couple of stitches either side of the date itself. And I thought, actually, that doesn't look too bad. And if I just leave it like that, I would have room to put in Charles Rex, the initials for Charles Rex, and three for Charles III. And that was the only thing that I thought was missing from this chart were the initials and the, you know, some reference to Charles III specifically. Um, so that was where I was able to put them in. So it's probably not perfect in, des in design terms because it wasn't, you know, I have interrupted someone else's design. Um, but I'm happy that I was able to include those initials and his number. So that is my little coronation stitch and it is finished. I probably will just make it into a little pillow that I will, you know, rotate through some displays in the house and in the bowl or something along with some of my other general stitching. So, but it was nice to have a coronation stitch. And I know, yes, yes, those of you who are jumping up and down and shouting, but you said you weren't going to buy patterns. I said I wasn't going to buy many. <laughs> And, and that resolve is cracking, cracking and cracking more daily. But I did learn that one of the reasons that we buy patterns is so we can join in with things. <laughs> and when an event happens or a sale or, or a swap or something of that nature, then we want to purchase patterns to be able to, to join in and to participate in our community. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> this time. So yes, I purchased this one pattern so far. <laughs> anyway, that is my coronation finish, the Royal Coronation by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Now, just while I'm here, I will tell you that if I had seen it before I saw this one, the stitch that I would have stitched is this one by Karen at Weedy Flower Creations. I will try to put in a link um, to where you can get the pattern from. And if I can't put a link, I will at least put Karen's Instagram name and you can go back through her Instagram posts and find out it is a freebie. And she has made it available to folks for the coronation. 
I think it's lovely. I think it's very elegant. I saw today actually that Michelle at Mama Loves You GB has stitched it. Um, so yeah, if you are interested, that is one I could recommend to you as well as the Caterpillar Cross Stitch, which is a lovely chart. Oh, and I did forget to tell you that a lot of the coronation stitches you will see um, include flowers from the four home nations of the United Kingdom. So up at the top here, we have at the top and the bottom, we have the roses for England. And then at the top, we've got daffodils to represent Wales. The Scottish thistles are here, here. And then we have the Irish shamrocks for Northern Ireland. So keep an eye out for those on lots of the um, the images and the charts that you will see that are coronation related, most of them um, have something along those lines included. Okay, let me move on now to my whips. And first of all, I took the Modern Folk Embroidery Sal 2020, a family patchwork sampler. I took it away with me and I was gonna have lots of stitchy time while I was chatting with Di. Uh, we did a lot more chatting than stitching <laughs> and and I went to her her patchwork guild group on Saturday morning and I had intended to take this with me it was an all-day meeting and I had intended to take this with me to stitch on while and um, while Di and her friends uh, were you know doing patchwork but it turned out that they had a different project arranged for that day and I was able to join in with their project so I didn't stitch on this, but I do have something else to show for my efforts on that day. I'll show you that in a little bit. Anyway, all of that to say, I didn't stitch as much as I thought I was going to on a family patchwork sampler. And I've also not been very good about keeping up with my daily thread on this um, for the last few weeks. But it is going to be my daily thread again for May. So I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things. I just need a little bit of regular stitching in my day. It just helps me so much <laughs> and I would really like to find the time for that again. Anyway, let me show you what I did do. Okay, I got a page finish of page 10. So that would be the October month that was released. And it's down here at the bottom, down over here. This white space, in case you haven't been here in the last couple of videos, does need to be filled in with some words or initials um, but I haven't decided what those are going to be just yet. I need to um, think about that and I will come back and do that. So page 10 is finished and I have crept over a teeny tiny bit and made a start in page 11. Some of this is also page 11 so there's a little bit already tackled and the really good news is there's only one more house with windows left. <laughs> And it just sits on the other side of here. And I think, let me check, oh, it's upside down. Yeah, it doesn't have as many windows <laughs> as any of the rest of the houses. So it's getting better. <laughs> anyway, here we go. This is the whole thing. I have stitched this on 32 count Lugana in antique white. And I'm using DMC 3832, which is a really pink, pink, raspberry pink color. I just love it. I love it so much. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to filling in all this white space down here. But it's one that I could happily hang up in the house while it's in progress, <laughs> if I had somewhere to hang it. But then I probably would never take it down and never progress it. So that would defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? Anyway, next project is Glitter Village. This is Country Cottage Needlework Pattern. I am on house number five, which is actually a church. And look at those pretty stained glass windows. Aren't they cute? So I, I did make a really good start on this house and then I ran out of stitching time, but oh, you can see it quite well there. You can see the glitter in my fabric as well. So I have the tree on either side still to do and a little bit of 
a kind of a border at the bottom. I'm not sure if it's a fence. Some of the others have like the picket fences. This one doesn't look quite so fence-like, but oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's a fence with um. I think it might be a fence with green swags on it. I think that might be what that is. I'm really sorry, my eyesight is not good tonight. So I'm not looking at that well. Probably could tell better from the pattern. <laughs> anyway, that is my progress. So I would say I'm probably halfway done on Glitter Village. I know it's taking me an age, but they are pretty. And the next whip that I made some progress on is Caterpillar Cross Stitches Mystery Sal, the British Isles Adventure Sal. And part four was released on the 26th of April. I was eagerly awaiting it. And when it came, it was the south of Ireland. So we hopped across the Irish Sea <laughs> and we had left Land's End. We now have another group of islands and I really, I'm just not going to get into it. <laughs> they were described as the Channel Islands, but I, I, <laughs> okay, I'm going to get into it, aren't I? <laughs> I think these are the Silly Isles. Silly Isles are just off Land's End. So I think these are more likely the Silly Isles, which would make these the Channel Islands, like I said last time. But anyway, I'm not arguing about it. I'm just curious and confused. <laughs> so let's just leave it as their islands <laughs> off the uh, southwest coast of England. And then we have a very cute little crab in the Irish Sea and a grey seal. So they're common in the Irish Sea. And then as we moved into the south of Ireland, the emblems motifs here are all really to do with myth and magic, or sorry, myth and music. I guess a little bit of magic too, if we think about the leprechaun and the pot of gold. So we have um, leprechauns hat those kind of scary little green men <laughs> green suited men i should say i find them a bit freaky um <laughs> the horseshoe for luck make sure you keep your horseshoe the right way up or the luck will fall out um and then the the rainbow with the pot of gold at the end of it the shamrock and the harp the irish harp so that is music I am hoping that as we go up um, further west and north that we might see some of the landmarks of Ireland and not just um, the mythologies, but, um, but it's very pretty and it's really nicely detailed. So there we go. That is part four of Caterpillar Costage Cell. And um, Keep an eye out for Marie's update. She normally does an update a week or two after the release, so that should be out soon, I would think. Um, and she'll do a Stitch With Me video and maybe she can enlighten us about the islands. <laughs> and we'll see what they really are. So we have another two parts left to go. So I'm hoping that, or I'm expecting, just because of the way we've been going, that we will finish Ireland with part five. And then we'll finish Scotland with part six. It's really nice. I really, really have enjoyed this sal. And Caterpillar Cross Stitch have another sal coming up. And they have asked me to join with them and do that sal as well. So I should have a little bit more information on that for you, hopefully, on the next video. But if you go to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube site or to their um, Instagram channels, then you will see um, Positivity Lifts is the name of the next sal. It is a hot air balloon shaped sal with typography of kind of positive wording in it. And I think it's gonna be really a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to um, working with them on that. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys 
also. So keep your eyes peeled for um, videos in the next couple of weeks where I'll have a little bit more information on it for you. Okay, I think, is that everything? That is everything for my stitching. I uh, didn't get to my turquoise teacups in the last few weeks. I didn't get to most things in the last few weeks, as you can see. Um, but I do feel slightly guilty about not getting to um, the turquoise teacups since it's my own sal, <laughs> the Get Your Kit On sal. It is lovely over on the Instagram um, page, the hashtag, to see all of the kits that are out there and are being stitched on and being finished. So that's really exciting that people are being motivated to pick up their kits and finish them and to keep going. So even though they have a finish, they're gonna do some more and um, keep working through some of their kits. So if you have a kit and you want to join us, then please do use the hashtag, share your pictures and come over and have a look and encourage everyone else along as well. Okay, the last time I shared a little spotlight on my stash, since I'm supposed to be purchasing minimally this year, I thought I would share what's already in my stash with you. Um, and I'm trying to do that in a kind of themed way, at least at this stage. So last time I shared my summer patterns, and I know that I have B patterns too, but I split them because I have too many all together to share. So this time I'm going to share the B patterns with you. You all know that I like a good B pattern. Excuse me any second. My throat is getting dry again. So the B patterns are very popular. They were really popular last year and I think they may even be more popular this year. I see a lot more B patterns being released. Priscilla and Chelsea have just started to do their little weekly roundabouts and um, they're going to be B themed. They have their um, streets. They've been doing a series of, I think it's four patterns are released and they're meant to be like a, a little town. Um, and this latest one is about bees and honey um, there's also who else has oh yes there's October Fair um, no not October Fair <laughs> October House <laughs> has has um, honey fair yes just I'm sorry that was a shambles wasn't it <laughs> October House have released Honey Fair, which is a beautiful bee skip. And anyway, there are so many, many charts um, being released this summer also with bees on it. So I am obviously not the only person who loves a good bee chart. And I um, couldn't resist the opportunity to share a few of my finished ones with you while I'm also going to show what's in my stash. So this is Primrose Cottage Stitches Hive Rules. So they, I think, may be releasing some more bees as well this year. Um, I have, um, sorry, I have several of their, I'm gonna have to go back that way. <laughs> I have several of their patterns from, um, from last year to show you in the stash. This is, um, welcome to our hive is, the bonus stitch that is included in the Hive Rules pattern. So when you get by the little booklet for Hive Rules, this one is in the back of it. So I made that one into a pillow. I um, finished last year, I think this is a freebie, if I can reach it. A freebie from Pinker and Pumpkin, I think. And I think it's called Bee Sampler. It's either Bee Sampler or Beehive Sampler. And then this one <laughs> by Tiny Modernist is the, uh, is the other. So if this is B sampler, then this is Beehive. And if this is B, then this is Beehive. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> Pink Room Pumpkin and Tiny Modernist. So if you're interested, I will put the links in for those. So these are a few of my B finishes. And you could also include this little one from Kathy Haberman at Hands-On Design. 
meant to be. So I love me a bee to stitch and um, eventually one day I will have enough to create a little um, vignette. That is the plan. And before I went to visit Di, or maybe just after I came back, yeah, I think it was just after I came back actually, I decided that my vignette, which doesn't exist yet, <laughs> but my vignette would need some skips. So I made myself some skips, aren't they cute? <laughs> okay, so this is very simple and I think, I think I owe credit to, maybe to Carolyn Zook at C Zook Stitches. I googled or searched YouTube for beehive tutorials and I had a look at several who, which were more so kind of from the stitching community. Um, and I think, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but I think it might've been Carolyn Zook Stitches. Anyway, the, the basic premise is that you need a shape, a form, and then you wrap it with some jute rope. So for this teeny teeny one, I use an old egg cup. It's just a ceramic egg cup. And I just started at the bottom and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and then created a little loop at the top. If I can find a tutorial that, I looked at these tutorials maybe six months ago. I didn't look at them whenever I actually sat down to do the thing because I just remembered what to do. Um, <laughs> but if I can find the tutorial that I used and whoever it was that should be credited, I will link it below. Anyway, that is, as I said, a little um, egg cup. And I just made a tiny bee skep with that. This one is a pudding bowl. This is what my Tesco's Christmas pudding came in. Um, and it was a perfect shape and a good size. So I think I will probably make um, little doorways. I think they were, I think, the tutorial that I watched showed them just, you know, making little archways out of felt and sticking them on and then adding, you can add some bees or flowers or whatever. I don't know how far I'm going to take it, but um, I have had the jute rope for a while <laughs> and I had, so I had the bits and pieces lying around and I just thought, oh, I'm going to do that. And I did, I spent um, a little bit of time pulling that together. So those will be from my bees um, eventually. <laughs> So let me show you the other patterns that I have for bee stitching. So this one um, is a kit that I have and it's from Oil Forest Embroidery. Um, I think you can buy just the pattern as well from their website. I will link it. It is possible to order now from an English website that they have, um, not from their original Russian website, but they do have an English and, or French French Etsy shop. That's quite hard to say. Um, yes, a French Etsy shop. <laughs> and this one is called Golden Bees, I think. Yes, Golden Bees. So I'm not sure if this will show up well when I have a little look at the video. If it's not showing well, I will replace it with a a photo screenshot of their from their website but as this I ordered this one before all the nonsense started um, I ordered this one as a kit and it came with linen and it came with um, the Isle Forest Embroidery's own threads which I don't believe you can get at the moment but I could be wrong so if you're interested you can certainly have a look check that out um, so that is golden bees and then I was gifted this chart and it's by Not Forgotten Farm and it is called The Beekeeper. The title isn't on the, on the front of the chart I was trying to remember but it's called The Beekeeper. Isn't she fantastic? <laughs> so I look forward to stitching her sometime. And then I had the Laurie Holt 
stitch card set D. I showed you two of those last time. One was a watering can and the other one I think was a cone flower maybe, something like that. Um, they were floral, more for summer. These two were specifically relating to bees. A B and a skip. So stitch card D. Then I have a bigger sampler, which is called the Be Kind Sampler. And this is just a printout from um, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine when I was subscribed. So this is from the 2021 summer edition of the magazine. And it is by Primitive Treasures. Yes, Primitive Treasures. I think that's really pretty. So if you have the magazine or a subscription, you will be able to find that on Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. Liz Matthews offers some free charts if you are a subscriber to her newsletter. And um, this one was a Summer Celebration Small from 2021. So if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. And I think when you subscribe, you'll get the newsletter and she'll tell you about um, when she releases uh, any new one, any new freebies, but um, I think you also have access to the past freebies. And oh, I should really not be showing you the chart. Whoops. But it is called Summer Celebration Small. Then I have two more of the Primrose Cottage stitches. Be design, be happy, and then kind words. Kind words are like honey sweet to the soul. I love that. So hopefully I will stitch those to join my other Primrose Cottage stitches. This chart is from um, Little Fox Stitching, and they were on Etsy. I'll hold it up so you can see but I don't think they're there anymore and um, they have beautiful designs I have a feeling they may have been Russian I didn't realize it at the time but I think um, they appear to have disappeared around the time when Russian sellers disappeared um, from Etsy so I'm not sure if they can be found anywhere else if I am able to find time to Google and see if there's anywhere else they might be available, then I will link it. But anyway, this one is called Little Lady of Bees. And I love her, I love her. <laughs> I don't stitch people very often, so um, I'm not a big fan of stitching people, but I like her. Then, of course, I have a Jacob. <laughs> so I have Modern Folk Embroidery, How Doth the Little Busy Bee. I love this one and I have this one kitted ready to go um, and I plan to stitch it in, uh, in a bright yellow thread on a green fabric so um, that's not as awful as it sounds. <laughs> Let me assure you it's not as awful as it sounds. This, <laughs> this will be the green fabric. So it's Mm, it's not showing up terribly well and then it will be a nice gold probably queen it's called queen bee i think yeah queen bee from classic color works so yeah when i when i said bright yellow gold and green that didn't really sound particularly attractive <laughs> so yes i love me a jacob pattern as you know so what could be better than jacob and the bees And then I have a couple more of, um, well, I have a couple of Stitching with the Housewives. These are their, some of their last year patterns. So honeybees and flowers, please. I like the green that that's on. It's a nice fresh green kind of green. And then this one is Snowed in Honey. And this one I won on a giveaway on their site. So they, Priscilla and Chelsea are very generous with their giveaways and I have won twice, I think. Um, so 
that's really nice, really fun to have. And it's a snow globe with honeybees in. So another great combination in my book. Okay. Then I have a little Lizzie kit. And um, there are two patterns in this, but one of them is bee related. Other, I guess there are actually three patterns in it. One of them is bee related, so busy as a bee, my needle and me. I really need to stitch so many of these. <laughs> They're lovely. So this is um, a Lizzie kit. I got it from One Two Three Stitch. And I think that's everything. It's already it's kitted up as well, so. I'm ready to go. So you can see I've got plenty of bees to keep me buzzing with my stitches. If only I had time to pick them up. We really need to look into this retirement business. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> anyway, I have one last thing to show you, stitching related, and that is the um, outcome of my day with the South Lakes Modern Quilt Guild. So Di, when I went to visit her, Di took me along to her guild meeting on Saturday and I met with the other lovely ladies of the guild. Some of them weren't able to be there that day, so, but those who were, I met and they were super friendly and super welcoming. And they had planned a day making fabric bowls and I was invited to join and to participate. So I did, I made a fabric bowl. <laughs> so here's my bowl with the little birdies on. Let me see if I can get the birdies right way up for you. And inside the bowl. So what we didn't think about when I made this was how I would get it home in my hand luggage. <laughs> but um, but we did, or I did. <laughs> I, uh, I managed to get it home and it didn't get too damaged and a quick press again. Um, fixed any of the kind of dints that my luggage had put in it. Charlotte commandeered it quite quickly when it came in the house and I found her scooting about in her wagon like this and she declared that she was a fireman and she had a fireman's helmet. So um, I know that it's much prettier <laughs> than a yellow hard hat <laughs> but um, Mummy didn't want her fabric bowl to be <laughs> a fireman's helmet. But anyway, you know, I don't always get to choose these things anymore. So that was um, my, my um, fabric bowl from my day with the South Lakes Modern Quilt Guild. Thank you, ladies. I don't think any of them watch this, but if ever you come across it, I want to thank you for your welcome and um, for the laughter and the copious amounts of tea that were, <laughs> that were available um, that Saturday that I visited. So, what are my plans? Hmm, I don't really know what I'm going to do with my plans. <laughs> I told you that one of the things that is coming up is the... Um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch Positivity Lifts Sal. Now it won't be starting in the next couple of weeks, but I will, um, I will have some information for you on it. I think it starts, uh, the actual pattern releases start on the twenty third of June, so that will be um, featuring in my plans somewhere down the line. Um, for more immediate plans, I really want to just find a way to get back to some kind of regular stitching. Life has felt a little bit chaotic the last few weeks. It's nothing big, it's just lots of little things just interrupting and eating time and it just means that yeah there just hasn't been time and that life is like that. So I appreciate that life is like that but I appreciate it more when life is not. <laughs> um, I would really like to be able to feel like I'm making some progress. I don't feel like I'm making good progress at the moment with my stitching. I think that might be down to the fact that I have chosen or have ended up with a lot of large projects on my whip board at the moment. Um, and I think that's sort of accidental. It's just I fell into them because I wanted to stitch them without thinking about um, their size. And for me, a lot of those very large pieces, they do take a long time. So I find that um, Whilst, you know, every stitch is still a stitch forward, isn't it? Um, but it just feels like 
I'm not seeing the progress because two or three days on those large pieces doesn't seem to doesn't look like much really when when it comes to it. whereas two or three days on a more medium-sized piece you feel like you're making progress so it's all just psychological probably because you know you stitch and you stitch and you know um it's not really a big deal i think just going forward i would like to um I would like to be able to push some of those big pieces over the line and there are lots more stitches as you, as you can see there are lots more patterns that I have that I want to get working on um, and I think if I could maybe when I when I have a finish of the bigger piece if I could sub in some smaller pieces to try to feel a little bit more momentum with my stitching so I don't know if that has kind of Um, anyway, I think just a little bit more calm and order in the day, in the week, <laughs> would help as well just to get back to things. So anyway, I think I have rambled enough and I think that's probably... A little bit more order and a little bit more calm will allow me to sit down for better stitching periods and actually achieve <laughs> a little bit more. But we'll see. We'll just I just have to take it as it comes. It is a hobby. Um, I miss it when I'm not stitching much. Um, I miss coming on here. I really, really have been feeling it the last couple of weeks um, that I wanted to come back and, and interact with you all again. But I just didn't get the space to do that. So sometimes that's just the way it's going to be. But I'm so glad that I was able to make a little bit of time tonight. I probably won't get this edited and up until tomorrow because it is now almost 10 o'clock at night <laughs> and I'm exhausted. So it's time to pack all of this away. And I hope that you have been having more success and more progress than me. But I hope that you've been having fun, whatever it is, however much you stitch, however little you stitch. I hope that it is fun. I hope that you enjoy watching other people stitch. I hope that you, if you're on social media, that you enjoy those communities, the, the Facebook and the Instagram communities that are there and the good things that happen out of our communities. So I hope that um, if you're doing a mania, <laughs> That it's not all a bit too crazy for you, <laughs> that you have um, lots of fun while you're tackling mania in whatever way you've decided to. I've never done mania and I don't know if I ever will, <laughs> but I am always intrigued by the different things that people do, whether they do 31 starts or one start a week or they have a monogamous May or whatever it is. I'm just I'm intrigued. I love actually, um, it is one of the things I really love about this community are the different ways that we keep ourselves motivated and keep ourselves stitching and keep ourselves stitching together as well. So if you're doing any of those things, and even if you're not, just make sure that you enjoy what you're stitching and please stay well and stitch happy. I'll see you soon.